Who are you and what do you do? Dagobert, are you ready for some quick fire questions? What's your favorite app or SaaS product that you use every day? Welcome to the Jod Pod, a micro podcast where we interview CEOs, founders, entrepreneurs, authors, and coaches. Today, we are joined by Dagobert Renouf, founder of Logology. Great to have you with us today, Dagobert. Yeah, thanks for having me. Awesome. For those, sorry, for those of us who don't know who Dagobert is, who are you and what do you do? Yeah, so it's hard to define it, but I started doing web development and web design when I was 15. I'm 32 now. Uh, and so I come from the time where I used to be a webmaster. So that means I had to do everything. And I loved it, actually, you know, from design to coding to, you know, uh, releasing the app. I mean, everything. Uh, now it's more like you need to be a designer or a front-end engineer or a back-end engineer. So over the past couple of years, I mean, I had specialized in that. So I was a front-end engineer doing stuff with React, uh, you know, JS, stuff like that. And actually, I had found a job that I kind of liked a couple of years ago. And, you know, it was kind of like my dream job. It was like, okay, um, I have a good salary. I work for a U.S. company. I'm French, by the way, so I live in France. And I, I had that job that I loved. But after a while, I realized, you know, is that it? You know, is that just what it is? Just like you work for somebody else. And initially I thought, well, you know, job is cool, money is cool, but, you know, I was kind of bored with it. And so if I had to introduce myself, I would say I'm a guy who's like pretty easily bored with stuff and <laughs> I need to find a challenge. And so, you know, that's what led me to become a founder. And what's funny is that uh, you know, when I was starting, when I was like 15, I was just doing tiny bit of websites. I was doing some, you know, video games, websites, stuff like that, just like teenagers things. And, um, and it was very natural for me to create my own stuff. But then I got into a, an idea of like, I had to have a career. So I started, you know, perfecting myself, becoming an expert at that. And I forgot about, you know, creating things and being an entrepreneur and inventing things. And so what's funny is that I literally tried everything I could to not do that. You know, I was freelancing. I was partnering with some people on their own startup. I was like, you know, working for a company, working as a contractor. I did everything uh, in France. In I worked in Moscow. I worked in Russia. I worked in the U.S. And at the end, I was just like, well, there's nothing left. To try, I have to do my own company because I just hate everything. I mean, at the end, I ended up hating everything. Uh, not hating, but like being bored. Oh, I understand. So that's basically, yeah. So that's understand. how I would present, introduce myself as like, uh, I tried very hard to not be an entrepreneur until I was like, well, I have no other idea except to try to do that now. Wonderful. So, yeah. so, so when did you actually become a f founder? When did you start? being an entrepreneur uh, so that was almost three years ago now yeah that was almost three years ago wow um, that's great i had that yeah i had that job uh that i really liked mm -hmm. uh, i mean i liked it for three months but i really liked it for three months and then um i got married uh and my wife uh you know so i'm a developer and she's a designer and it was pretty crazy because I wanted to quit my job to start my own thing. And so I, I, I was thinking of doing some kind of like WordPress, but for mobile apps, you know, kind of like making it easy for people to build mobile apps. That's what I wanted to build, you know, as a founder. Mm -hmm. But like, so we got married and during our honeymoon, which was in the U.S. because we love the U.S. So we were road tripping around Memphis and Nashville. So that was pretty, you know, very typical. And then, you know, we just, we just started doing that. You know, we were browsing in the hackers. We saw someone talk about having their logo company, uh, you know, having success. And we thought, wow, we could build something like this. And I don't know, like we just right away decided to do that. And so that was almost three years ago. I mean, the idea was like three years ago. 
And uh, yeah, and we just jumped on it and started building it. So she's my co-founder. That's that's awesome. It's, it's so always good to hear about why people start companies, how they move from being an employee to moving to creating their own things. Yeah. Um, and, it's, and it's very nice to have someone on your team, you know, as a co-founder, someone that you're married to. Uh, and it sounds like your skills perfectly complement each other, which is which is great. Uh, it really is. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's like... It's, it saves us a ton of, uh, I mean, you feel like we can do a very polished product, just the two of us, because like skills are so, we have every skill basically, except marketing, but we need to learn, we are starting to learn that. But yeah. I, I think you're doing okay on your marketing, uh, Dagobert. Uh, what, one question I always ask our guests is how they got their first customer. Because I think coming up with an idea is, like everybody has an idea, but it's actually when you start taking action and you start going out and trying mm. to make that first dollar and how you get that first customer is actually when you really become an entrepreneur. Can you remember how that happened? Yeah. Well, the first first is like somebody we already knew. So I would say it doesn't really count. I mean, it does count because like we, we still, you know, we still get to realize that uh, most of our friends didn't give a shit about our product. So it still counts, you know, to convince a friend to buy your product. It still counts, you know. That's my friends, my is. friends have not bought my product yet. So um, yeah. it doesn't matter if it's someone that you know, you're still solving a problem for them. They're still willing to exchange value through money for something you're providing. It still matters. Yeah, and how, how us, did it happen? I think, so, well, basically, we just you know uh, started announcing that it existed. You know, so that was last you know a year ago in uh, end of April, and we just you know announced it and. Uh, that's this uh, woman who we we're not really friends with her, but like she's part of a group of friends, and we know her a bit. And she and she just really fe fell in love with the thing, uh, because well, because we really solve a problem. I think. I mean, for a very specific type of people, we solve a problem in a very good way. And so, so she just come came to the website and just bought it, like you know, in a in a couple of hours. Because, you know, the, the thing with our product is like, it can be very, very good for a few people. And then they just fall in love with it instantly and they just buy it. So now what's difficult is doing that with everyone. But at least with her, she came to the website and she was like, wow. And we're basically a website that generates logos for people, you know, very logos that my wife designed. So it's very different from what you see usually, uh, you know, very interesting designs. And she just found the logo and was like, that's the logo I've always wanted. So she just bought it. So that That's was, that was an amazing moment. And uh, how did you yeah. find out? Did you get a, an email notification come through saying purchase or something like that? Oh, it's because, you know, since I'm, <laughs> to be honest, uh, we were so excited. We had put tons of trackers initially on it. <laughs> you know, I, I'm not happy to say, but like there was stuff like something that's called uh, full story, which is the nastiest of trackers you can find. Not nasty, but like, I mean, from our side, it's the most exciting, but it's almost creepy. I mean, it's it's very famous. You know, a lot of people use it. And basically what it does is it feels like you're filming somebody's screen. So you see them navigate, you see their mouse, you see, I mean, you know, the cursor, you see everything. And and we basically saw her on the website, you know, hesitate, you know, take a few logos. Oh, I'm going to change color. You know, so that was, I mean, initially we put that because we wanted to learn how, I mean, mm. if there was a problem with our UX, you know, now we removed it because uh, it feels very creepy. But uh, but that's how we learned. We just saw her and we was like, "Is she gonna buy? Is she gonna buy?" <laughs> okay. Oh, she did. You know. So that was pretty exciting. But wow. when you do that, you just stop working because you're just spying on every user, and that gets yeah. That's so exciting. That's that's almost like Probably. standing outside a shop and watching someone go in and pick something up. Yeah, exactly. Seeing yeah. it, putting it back down again, and going to the cashier. That's fantastic. That's that's an exciting thing, and you'll remember that, you know, for years to come. That feeling of getting that oh, yeah. first first customer. That's really nice. So so logology, talk talk me through it. How how does it work? Who's it aimed Who's it aimed at? Yeah. So basically, logology. It's uh, the idea started because my wife is a designer and for, uh, I mean, kind of like the same type of experience as, as me, you know, started early and she's done logos for, you know, more than 10 years, uh, worked with startups, some very successful French startups, you know, that she did logos for, 
And she has very a knack for it because you, you have graphic designers who can be good at many things and she can do many things, but logos is really the thing where she shines. And she's always been very good at that. And so the thing though, is that you know, we were working with, I mean, she was working with startups. Uh, so she had, you know, customers on a regular basis, but she was very often have people come, come up and be like, Oh, I love your work. Can you do a logo for my project? And she'll be like, yeah, okay. It starts at like, Two thousand dollars. I mean, euros. Two thousand euros to get started, and they were like, "Oh, I only have like two hundred. It's just a tiny project. I'm just starting." But I really love your work, you know. So sometimes she would do it, which would be, you know, terrible because she wouldn't make any money and she would actually waste so much time. But it was still cool. But you know, in the end, you need to you need to make money. So she couldn't say yes. Most of the time, she had to say no. And the idea was like, "Okay, you're very good at making logos. I can build websites." Uh, and tons of people uh, only have a couple hundred bucks to get started. So how can we give them something? You know, how could we make the thing that we that you sell for two thousand for like a week of work? You know, consulting. Can we make that cheap? I mean, not not cheap, affordable. You know, at like a hundred or two hundred bucks. And and so we came up with that idea of like automating most of it. I mean, it's fully automated now. But the way we did it is we tried to really copy. What, how she works. So usually the way she works is she's going to ask questions uh, uh, from the client, like what's your vision? What are your values? You know, who's your target customer? And from that, she's going to come up with ideas for logos. You know, she re it's, it's very, it's very seldom happens that a customer would come to see her and be like, Oh, I want a bird, do a bird. It never happens. It's mostly, what can you bring to the table with your ideas? You know, so that's where we, so now with the finished product, uh, is you go to the website, you answer, uh, 11 questions. It takes on average three minutes, three to four minutes to fill. And it's very abstract questions. Like if your startup was a movie, what would it be? Uh, you know, or why, you know, stuff like that. Very crazy questions. Some people are, uh, find it off putting, but so we're trying to find a way to make it easier on them but a lot of people actually feel like it helps them so they so you answer these questions takes a few minutes and then uh, we're going to show you immediately the best logos for that and all the logos she spent the last 2.5 years designing them and she still does so she's designed more than 600 logos so far so you know and when i'm talking about logos it's actual logos because you know people today when you go on a website you think you're getting a logo generator, but usually it's just taking an icon from like a database and it's supposed to be an icon. So it's supposed to be very plain in a way. Uh, whereas a logo, you need to have, you know, convey emotions, convey, you know, some, some message. And so what, what we did in the past two and a half years is try to design a catalog of logos for every type of startup. You know, so different type of startup industries like productivity apps, communication apps, you know, clean tech, biotech, you know, marketing, tons of industries and have logos that have meaning for these industries. And so basically you take the questions and three minutes after we match you with the right logos, with the right fonts, with the right colors, and you can just buy it right away. And it's a hundred bucks instead of 2000. So, yeah. Man, that's, it sounds absolutely fantastic. You know, 100 bucks instead of 2,000. It sends so much value out of that. And answering those kind of questions, as you say, they sound abstract. But I did, I did lots of kind of mission, vision, and value work with, with clients. And those yeah. are the questions sometimes that, that throw up really interesting angles and edges that you can actually play around and, and, and help understand why, why people are doing what they do. Yeah. Um, that's fantastic. Yeah, we have a lot of people telling us, wow, I, I learned things about my brand. Because at the end <sighs> of the questions, we also tell you who you are. We tell you, like, we describe your personality. And a lot of people really love it and tell you, wow, that's me. You, you nailed it. Mm -hmm. And they're surprised. Uh, and they tell us, you should sell just that. So we might, yeah. we might end up doing that. But yeah. Uh, uh, mess messaging is, is challenging at the, at the best of times. Um, I've got a question. If, when do you think in the life the life cycle of a startup or of a personal brand, they will need to invest in a logo. Because I, I speak to, the reason I ask you that question is because 
I speak to a lot of founders or people with ideas that spend mm-hmm. all their time doing busy work. They build a website, they, they design a logo or they buy a logo. Oh, yeah. yeah. They, you know, they do their social media, they take their selfie, they throw it up there. And at no point have they gone out and got a client or a customer. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah and and yeah, I'm I, just wondering yeah, where, do you, where do you want, where do you think it would be the optimum per time or the, the, the thing that they've already done to make it worth them investing in in actually a, a, a professionally designed logo. Yeah, it's very interesting because my position has evolved on that recently. I mean, not recently, but over the past couple of years. Because mm-hmm. you know, as I said earlier, when people were coming to my wife, she, and some even were like, "Well, yeah, I can pay the two thousand and we were like, "Don't do that. You just have ten thousand to build your product. Don't spend two thousand on the logo. That's stupid. Don't do that." You know. Uh, make your find some you know profitability and then come back so but then what i've noticed also is that uh, if you look at like 15 years ago you look at google you know looks like like the first version looks at youtube looks at you know all these websites facebook facebook was decent uh you know but you look at all these websites they look like shit and nobody cares because you know, it was just about the innovation, the technology, and it was new, and it was in the internet that was enough. But it feels like over the past couple of years, you know, like you look at pro- even like you look at Product Hunt with all the product that launched. Like you look at three years ago, you could just be successful on Product Hunt, and that was awesome. You had like some traction. But now there's so many products, so many like, and with no code, with the no code trend, you have like you have like hundreds or even thousands of products every day. And so I feel like now, I mean, and you look at websites, you, you go to a website, the landing page could be the same as another website, and every landing page looks the same, every logo looks boring, like everything looks the same. And I'm like, and in a way, I used to think all that matters is the product and the differentiator, and I still think that, you know, if you have an incredible innovation, obviously you don't need any marketing in a way. But at the same time, when you're just a bootstrapper, or like you have a new, you have a new product, and you have so much noise everywhere. Uh, well, I feel like having a brand that's a bit different, it can like, in, I mean, even for us, like we have a lot of compliments on the design of our landing page. And, you know, it just gives people uh, a bit of like uh, of a pause when they come to the website. And instead of just skipping, they're going to check it out. And, and, you know, I feel like today it's really much more important than even like five or ten years ago. So to me, and I feel like Logology, we feel like we can be really helpful with that because we, I still stand by the fact that you shouldn't spend money on your logo. You really shouldn't because like you don't have money. You need to find profitability. And so we hope that, you know, and our product at some point we could have pivoted to something more expensive, but we wanted to be less expensive and stay focused on that because we're like, we want to help like the tiny founders who need to stand out in the noise and in all the crowded, you know, products, you have so many things. So you can at least get something that stands out from the crowd and you still need amazing copy. You still need a good product, all of that, you know, super important and maybe more important even. But with branding, you can get like, you know, and an original logo, you can get something that, you know, that makes people pause and connect with you a bit and feel like, oh, I'm going to check these guys out and not just like the generic landing page that I've seen a hundred times you know, and generic branding. Mm. So I feel like, you know, recently it's became more important over the last few years. I I think getting that attention is absolutely key. There's there's an attention war going on with so much media going on out there. And if there's a way that you can authentically cut through that with message, uh, branding, and and, and that that aligns with actually what you deliver, then that, then that makes sense. But I, it's, I, I think at the point that you've made there is that so long as you've got a momentum towards actually profitability, if you can't see that yet, spending money on stuff like this. I... Oh, yeah. No, you're right. I mean, yeah. So to answer your question, to be more more clear about that, yeah, if you have zero customers, hmm. uh, probably not time. But like if you start to get a bit of traction, like you found you know, at least 10 or 20 people who really love what you do, you feel like you're getting somewhere, then it can be you know useful. So you can, you know, take it to the next level. Yeah. Yeah. I, I promised myself not to spend any money on the Jod Pod until I've done a hundred episodes. 
Because then, by then, well, I'm yeah, but you're up. still doing branding, though. You're like in red. You're like all oh, <laughs> the red glasses. I've seen the red glasses, <laughs> so you know. They come. They branding. come out. They come out from time to time. Um, yeah. But the, the branding is happening. But it's all. Uh, it's all bootstrapped. It's all stuff that I've done. It's nothing that I've kind of spent any any money on. Um, oh yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. That's that's the idea. Um, and uh, Dagobert, where's the best place for people to go to check out Logology? So for Logology, you just need to go to the website. So that's logology.co. Yeah, that would Excellent. be the best place to go. And, to. And, and that'll take you through the 11 questions and you can grab yourself. Yeah, basically, logo. yeah, you basically have a homepage where we detail everything, but you can just, you know, I can't tell you the name of the button because we're actually A-B testing it. So you won't see, <laughs> everybody's not going to see the same, but basically you have a big black there button. Will be a button that, there will be a button of some description that you can click black, on. Yeah, and you can, and it's big and it's everywhere, so you can see it, yeah. So, so you're not testing the color? Uh, oh, no, I mean, like, uh, because, uh, I mean, the visual identity uh, is very strong for us and we really need to keep the black for that. Okay, I mean, it fair. stands out, people see it. We, but we still should test it because you never know. So maybe we're going to – we'll see. We'll see. Good, if, you, good if, if you're listening to this and you see a different color button, let us know because that, that would be a really interesting thing to see if that's happened over the next couple of months. Um, yeah. Dagobert, are you ready for some quick fire questions? Uh, yeah, let's do it. Awesome. What's your favorite app or SaaS product that you use every day? Uh, so for me, I really fell in love with this product, and it's called Home Research. And it's kind of like a writing app, but for, and the way they say it, it's like for networked thought. And that's just basically just notes, but you can connect them. And that really helps me, helps me think and organize my, my thinking. Mm. I, I really like what Rome Research are doing. It's kind of like, a, I don't know if you heard of Zet, Zettelkasten. Um, oh, no, I haven't. No, so Zettelkasten is basically one of the things that Rome Research is based on. And it's the idea of thoughts kind of connecting with each other, not in a sequential fashion. And yeah. they, you know, different ideas kind of uh, bleed into other different ideas. Yeah, exactly. And it's yeah. really difficult to, uh, uh, you know, if you're just taking notes to, to, to pollinate ideas across each other. Whereas if you're using yeah. something like Rome Research, uh, it, it, those kind of ideas and thoughts kind of meld together. Um, it's quite highbrow, but I, I'm really fascinated by it. And I love the, the idea of different uh, ideas or thoughts kind of inspiring action in, in areas that you wouldn't even consider um, thinking yeah. about. So, um, yeah, thanks, for, thanks yeah. for bringing up Rome Research. That's the first, first for the podcast. So it's uh, interesting to hear cool. about someone that's actually using it. Um, what's your favorite book that you've uh, gifted or you recommend as, as often as you can? I never gifted a book. I think it's because when I was young, I hated when somebody gave me a book. Like you're 10 and you're expecting video games and they give you a book? No, come on. Books so are great gifts. Why. Books are great. Uh, Noah, that's my son. Noah, if you're li listening to this, books are brilliant. Uh, read them. If anybody gives them to them, you make no. sure you say thank Noah, you. Noah, just you know, <laughs> stop crying, shouting, and ask for a video game. Nobody's going to be mad at you. You're 10. You can get away with it. Okay. No, I'm kidding. Um, uh, no, so that would be Zero to One by Peter Thiel. That's just like my go-to book. But recently, I really like the book by April Dunford, which is uh, obviously awesome. And it really helped us, you know, figure out our positioning and the problem we had in communicating our product. So I would recommend any founder to go through that one. Yeah. That's great. Obviously awesome. That's a new one on me. Like I'm very aware of Peter Thiel, but uh, April Dunford, that's a new one. Thank you very much for recommending it, Dag uh, Dagobert. Who do you love listening to on the podcast or watching on your YouTubes? Uh, uh, honestly, I don't like listen to podcasts or watch YouTube too much. You can listen to this one when it's released, though, Dagobert, yeah? That's, yeah. I will. I will. Yeah. Even though it's Thank myself and I hate listen, I don't want to listen to myself. I will because there's I, some other yeah, great guests. There's some other great guests that people that might be interested in your logos. So you should hear hear what they're I saying. I will. No, I, I will. I will give it a shot. <laughs> I just uh, I just don't have this habit of podcast. But like on YouTube, uh, you know, unrelated. But I basically the only guys I follow is um, uh, Max Tech. It's basically reviews of like, you know, Apple products. And I'm kind of like a Mac, you know, fanboy. So I like that. Yeah, we all like sitting down and watching some reviews of some high-end Mac stuff. Exactly, um, yeah. 
or the, like the... prediction on the new MacBook Pro and like, oh, awesome. It was yeah. Like, it never yeah. happened. Yeah. And then the Apple tax comes around once a year when you have to upgrade your phone and your, your hardware. Exactly. Yeah. Else. And everything st stops working and you're like, <laughs> oh, I still love it and I'm still going to give them even more money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Who's a uh, up and comer? Someone in your industry that you think we should be keeping an eye on? That might be a, you know, future Musk, Bezos, or Huffington. Mm. Yes, yeah, so I'm not sure about future Musk because he seems very ambitious. But there's this guy. I feel like it's he's called uh, Danny Postma, and he just seems to be an indie hacker. He did YC apparently from his Twitter bio, and he just impresses me because. He's doing, doing very different ideas and he's ex executing very fast. He's doing a landing page website initially and he converted that into a way to build your own landing page from, you know, blocks of inspiring landing pages. I just was blown away by like the creativity behind this. So I would say, yeah, Danny Postma. Excellent. That's a great recommendation. Uh, and we'll link to Danny in the show notes so that we can all kind of follow up and uh, see what Danny's up to at the moment. That's a name that rings a bell, but I, I, I can't place him uh, at the moment. But thanks for the uh, recommendation uh, yeah. uh, on that, Dagger Bear. Um, so apart from Logology, uh, which you've speak, spoken about, where's the best place for people to follow up with you directly, maybe reach out to you and, and have a conversation? Yes. Yeah, so I've been very active on Twitter lately. So that would be Twitter. Yeah, you can go to my Twitter. Uh, and it's going to be twitter.co slash Dago Renouf, I think. I'm not even sure. Sorry about that. Yeah, I've got it. Uh, I've got it written here. It's actually how we connected uh, initially was on, on, on Twitter. Yeah. Um, okay, yeah, so yeah. that's the one. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, Dago Bears, uh, definitely check out uh, his uh, Twitter and see what, uh, see what he's talking about. Um, it's quite funny. I like I like your Twitter feed, uh, uh, Dagger Bear. It's, it's yeah, insightful, yeah, insightful be, and funny. Insightful and funny. Yeah, I try to be funny. I try to. I force myself to create memes because I'm like, okay, I need to grow this Twitter. So <laughs> let's be funny. Let's be witty. That's my. That, that's also my personality. But you know, so it's natural. But let's yeah. let's grow Dagger Bear's Twitter. If you're listening to this, head over to Twitter right now on your phone and go follow. Uh, go follow him. We'll put the show notes uh, an actual link to it as well. Uh, there we have it. Uh, Dagobert Renouf is the founder of Logology, who helped founders get a logo and brand identity that aligns with the values of their startup and automates it all in just a few minutes. He got his first customer by networking, sharing and announcing what he was doing with Logology. And a friend of a friend got in contact and they actually snooped them whilst they were on the on the web page going through buying uh, the logo yeah, that they saw. That. Uh, really fantastic uh, story. Thanks for sharing that, Dago Bear. Um, the app that he recommends is Rome Research, a really interesting writing tool that helps with uh, kind of uh, different thoughts and, and notes and it's almost like a kind of neural network of your ideas. Uh, check it out if you're into note-taking at a super high level. Reading wise, Dagger Bear is recommending Zero to One by Peter Thiel and a new one, obviously awesome by a April Dunfor. Uh, definitely something for us all to check out there because I really like what Dagger Bear's done with that. And if he's been inspired by those books, you should probably be inspired by them as well. To relax, he's on the YouTubes watching Max Tech's reviews of Apple products so that he can release his inner Apple fanboy. And in the future, we should be keeping an eye on Danny Posma, the uh, saw him on Indie Hackers. He's been releasing lots of products based around a simple landing page uh, website that he started with. Uh, I'll link to Danny Posma in the notes so that we can check out what he's up to. And you can follow up with Dagger Bear uh, directly on Twitter. Uh, check him out as D A G O R E N O U F. That's Dago Renouf. And his website, logology.co, is L-O-G-O-L-O-G-Y dot C-O. Dagobert, thanks for joining us today on the Jod Pod. Oh, thank you, Jod. Like, I really enjoyed it. Awesome. And thank you for joining us today on the Jod Pod. To ensure that you don't miss out on any of these future episodes, interviews just like today's with uh, Dagobert, please hit subscribe. Hit the like button, 
bang the bell so you get a notification when we launch every single episode. And why don't we ask Dagger Bear a question about logos, branding in the comments below, maybe starting up a uh, uh, a brand new company in the last three years. I'm sure you've got some entrepreneurial questions um, that you can ask to Dagger Bear. It'll help out the video and it'll help out uh, the channel. So please give something back. Hopefully you've been inspired by what Dagger Bear has been speaking about today. Maybe you th you've got an idea for a company and uh, now you just need to take some ac action. Then maybe you could check out logology.co and get yourself a new logo. Please go and build something. Inspire the next generation. Thanks for joining us today on The Jod Pod. If you enjoyed this interview, why don't you check out some of these other interviews that we've done on The Jod Pod. More inspirational CEOs, coaches, entrepreneurs, founders, and authors. I'm sure there's something here that will inspire you to build something new.